G'day everyone, let me show you how to use a little known technique to cut out the background of a simple graphic in Photoshop. My name is Hoi and in this video we'll walk through the quick mask mode, the levels adjustment and use mask in different overlays to spruce up our design. If you want to follow along you can use the exact image that I'm using, the link is in the description. Okay, so to get started, let's open the image that we'll be using by going to File, Open, navigate to the folder where you've got your image saved, click on the image and press Open. Let's just make this bigger by pressing Command-0 on our keyboard. Before we cut out the background using the Quick Mask Mode, I want to show you what the Quick Mask Mode is first. Now the Quick Mask Mode is a tool to make or modify a selection, so let's see that in action. Now there's three ways to get to the Quick Mask Mode. One is through the Menu Selection, so if you go to Select and go down to Edit in Quick Mask Mode, and you'll notice that your layer has turned red or whatever color that you've set it to. The other indication that you're in the Quick Mask Mode is this little icon here. Now you can see that the border around this icon is darker shade than this grey panel here. If I turn it off, then there is no color and the background sort of blends into this uh, grey panel here. The second way to bring up the Quick Mask Mode is you got it by clicking this icon here. So by clicking on it, you get the same effect the background of this icon turns a little darker and your layer has turned red. I'm going to switch that off by pressing that icon again. And the third way to get to the quick mask mode is by a keyboard shortcut, which is my preferred way of bringing up the quick mask mode because as the name suggests, it should be quick. Now the keyboard shortcut is Q. So just press Q on your keyboard. And now it's the same as if you used the menu selection here or by clicking on this icon here. Now remember, you know that it's on Quick Mask because this color of the layer has turned red. Now I'll show you later how to change the color of the layer to signify that you're in Quick Mask mode. But for the time being, just know that the color of your layer will change. One of the most common use case of the Quick Mask mode is by fixing a mask that you've already created. Now let me demonstrate that. I'm just going to turn off my Quick Mask by pressing Q on my keyboard and I'm going to select this Object Selection tool here. It doesn't really matter which selection tool you select, I'm just using the Object Selection tool just as an example. So I'm going to click on that, I'm going to make sure that New Selection is checked and Object Finder is selected. I'm just going to draw over this and I'm just going to turn off this pink overlay here by just moving to my Move tool. I'm going to press V on my keyboard and let's just zoom in here a little bit so you can see a little bit better by pressing Option and scroll wheel mouse up. So you see that there is a selection being made by these marching ants here. And if I scroll down a little bit by pressing spacebar and dragging on my mouse, you can see the rest of the selection. But say that you're not happy with the selection here and you don't want the selection to select this bit here. So I can obviously modify my selection by using the object selection tool again, or I can use the quick mask mode. So since this video is about the quick mask mode, let's press Q on our keyboard. And because we've already got something selected, uh, you see this red overlay on top of what we've got selected as well as this layer turning red. I'm going to just take out this red bit here. So I'm going to press B on my keyboard to bring out the brush tool. And I'm just going to reduce the size of my brush by pressing Control Option left click on my mouse and then just drag my mouse to the left to resize my brush, something like this. I'm going to make sure I have white as my foreground color. At the moment I have black, so I can switch that by pressing this icon here or can simply switch it by pressing X on my keyboard. If you don't have white or black as your foreground color or your background color and you can't switch it, you can simply press D on your keyboard which resets it to default colors and then switch it again by pressing X on your keyboard. Now I'm just going to go back to the image and I'm going to just paint this out to what I want. So I don't want this black area here. Now I'm going to make a rough selection. You can see that it's nowhere near perfect, 
all I'm trying to show you is that within the quick mask mode, you can easily and quickly paint out what you want. Now, if you want to paint in the graphic, then you use black as your foreground color. At the moment, black is my background color. So I'm going to switch that by pressing X on my keyboard and I can just paint that back in. So I can do that until I'm happy with it. I'm not going to perfect it because it's not the point of this video. Once I'm happy with the quick mask mode, I'm going to exit the quick mask mode by pressing Q on the keyboard. And then the selection would have changed based on what I've painted in the quick mask mode. Now I can simply create a mask to mask that out. So let's go to our mask layer icon here and just press this. I'm going to fit it to screen by pressing command zero so you can see everything. Now, if you're following along and might have the inverted version of this, now let me just recreate that by pressing on my mask here and then invert that. That means that you had another preference different to what I have. So I'm going to double click on this quick mask mode icon here. What I had selected was selected areas, which means that wherever I paint, that will keep the areas that I painted in and then throw everything out. So let's just demonstrate that. I know that sometimes explanations sound OK, but it doesn't really land. So I'm going to just cancel out of that and then delete this mask here and then start from the beginning. I'm going to delete this mask. I'm going to double click on the quick mask mode and then just have mask areas selected. I'm going to press OK. I'm going to enter the quick mask mode by pressing Q on my keyboard. And I'm just going to make a quick selection here. I'm just going to resize my brush a bit. Control Option, left click on my mouse and then drag my mouse to the right to increase the size of it. I'm just going to make a rough selection with my mouse here. Now remember, I've got mask area selected, which means that wherever I painted, which is this area here, is going to hide that when I make a mask. Let's exit out of quick mask mode by pressing Q on my keyboard and then make a mask by pressing on the mask icon. You see, this is what I've selected and this is what it's masked out. So the other option, if I double click on that, is selected areas. Whoops. Let's not forget to create the quick mask mode first. So uh, let's press Command Z to undo that and then enter into quick mask mode by pressing Q on our keyboard and just double check that we're in quick mask mode by checking the color of this layer here. It is red, so we can confirm that we are in quick mask mode. I'm just going to select that. And remember, now we're in selected areas, which means that it will keep whatever I paint in and then mask out everything else. So let's exit out of the quick mask mode by pressing Q on our keyboard again. And then let's just mask that out. I'm going to delete that again and then just show you the other options that the quick mask mode offers. Double click on that. And this is the color when you enter into the quick mask mode. So at the moment it's red, which correspond with this and it has an opacity of 50. I can change the color to anything I like by clicking on this and then just choosing any color I want. So something like this and press OK. If I bump up the opacity to say 100 just to exaggerate the effect and press OK. So I'm in quick mask mode now and I'm going to paint here. And because I put my opacity to 100, it's opaque. I can't see through it. I don't know how useful 100% opacity is. So I don't know when you're going to use that, but you have that option to uh, set your opacity to 100. Now I'm going to just reset that to 50% again. So double click on that. I kind of like the red, so I'm going to return it back to red and slide it up here, press OK, and then just punch in 50% here and then press return on my keyboard to accept that. I'm going to deselect my current selection by pressing Command D on my keyboard. So let's now jump into the little known technique that I promised you in the beginning of this video. Now, just a reminder, what we want to do is to cut out all the white areas and separate that from the background so we can create a new background for this. Now, there are many selection tools to do this, but here we we'll use the quick mask mode. So the first step is to select everything. So you can go to your menu by going to select all, or you can press K 
Command A on your keyboard and that will select everything as shown on this marching ants here. Let's copy our selection by pressing Command C on our keyboard or you can go to Edit and go down to Copy. Now that we've copied the image on our clipboard now, we don't need it selected anymore so we can deselect that by pressing Command D on our keyboard or if you're not one for keyboard shortcuts like I am, you can go to Select and Deselect. Now this is grayed out for me because I've already deselected here. The next thing to do is to enter into Quick Mask Mode. We can do that again by pressing Q on our keyboard. Now just double check that we are in Quick Mask Mode by checking the color of this layer and this is red so it signifies that we are in Quick Mask Mode. Let's press Command V to paste that effect or you could have went to Edit and go to Paste. Now the next thing that we need to do is to separate the foreground from the background. Now in our case the foreground is everything in white here. And to do that we'll make the whites whiter and the blacks blacker. So let's go to Image, Adjustments and Levels. Alternatively you can press Command L and this will bring up your levels adjustment. Now on a simple graphic with limited colors, in our case basically two colors, black or white, you normally see two sort of humps here. One for the dark areas and then one for the light areas here. There is a lot of dark areas, a lot of blacks in this range of gray. So what we want to do is to shift this tab all the way here. So just after this hill or hump here. And what this shows is that if I go straight down here, it's saying that all the gray areas from here all the way back here will turn to the darkest shade. And the darkest shade that we have is here, which is zero, black. And similarly, what we're going to do is do it for the white areas. So we're going to push the white areas from the right to the left. And if I draw a straight line down, what we're saying is that all the shades here from here to here will turn 255 which is pure white. So in essence, what we're doing is making the dark areas darker and the white areas whiter. So let's press OK to accept the change and then let's exit from the quick mask mode by pressing Q on our keyboard. And now you have the selection here. So with the selection still active, let's create a solid color by going to solid color here. Let's choose white, press OK. I'm going to invert that by pressing on my mask and pressing Command I. Now it doesn't look like we've done anything because we've still got the background layer active. So I'm going to turn off the visibility here. So it's kind of hard to see now because we've got transparency as our background. So let's create another solid color by pressing this icon here. Go up to solid color and choose any color you like. I'm going to choose this yellowish color here, this bright color. It won't be my final color, but there is a reason why I'm choosing bright yellow here. Press OK. I'm going to click and drag it beneath this layer here. I know it's a bit hard to see, but I wanted to make my next point, which is don't copy and paste your selection. If I zoom in by pressing Option on my keyboard and scroll wheel mouse up, you can see that against this very bright background, there are no fringing here. If I had copied and pasted my selection, you get some fringing around the edges. Now, if that didn't make any sense at all, let me just demonstrate that instead of talking about it. I'm going to create a new layer on top of this. So I'm just going to press on this, click on new layer. I'm going to click on this mask here and make a selection by pressing command and then clicking on this. Let's copy what's selected by pressing Command C on our keyboard. Let's go up to our layer and pasting what we've just copied by pressing Command V on our keyboard. I'm going to turn off this layer here. Now you can see by simply copying and pasting it onto a new layer, it has created all these fringing here. So let me just turn on the other layer that we created. Turn off and then turn on again. See how nice these edges are. It doesn't have any fringing. Whereas if I simply copied and paste the mask, I'm going to turn that on. You can see that there's a lot of fringing, a lot of black areas here. So I'm just going to 
delete that by dragging and trashing that. I'm going to zoom out again by pressing Command-0 to fit it to screen. Now, I don't know about you, but the bright yellow is kind of hurting my eyes. So let's just change that by double clicking on that. And I'm going to change that to something, you know, a deepish blue kind of thing. I'm going to press OK. Now, this is white because our solid color is white. I can change that by, again, clicking on this solid color thumbnail here and then just changing it to whatever color I want. So let's just choose this yellow here and then press OK. So the next thing that I'm going to do is simply just spruce out our design. If you're only here for the quick mask mode, uh, you don't need to stick around, but I highly encourage you to stick around so you can see the end result. And the other thing I can do to spruce it up is just to overlay a picture on top of this. So to do that, I'm going to bring in another image and you can also download it in the description below. Let's go to File. And instead of going to Open, which will bring it up into another window, I'm going to go to Place Embedded. Let's navigate to the file and press Place. Now, I've deliberately chosen the flowers to sort of soften the design a bit to contrast or juxtapose it against a morbid skull. Just to take the edge of the poster a little bit because I don't want it all grungy or edgy. I'm going to resize this by clicking on this corner control here. Press Shift to constrain the proportion. I'm going to also press Option to resize it from the anchor point. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to press this check mark to accept the change. Now, obviously, we have a problem here because it's covering the whole image. At the moment, our blend mode is normal. Let's just play around with it. And I'm going to select hue. Now, that's a funky kind of color. Let's select that. And you notice that because I've changed the blend mode, this yellow area has become blotchy. Let's just zoom in a bit. You see how it's gone pixelated here, which I don't really want it. It's kind of cool look, which is fine if that's what you're after. But I just want the yellow to show a little bit more. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit more again. Command zero to fit it to screen. I'm going to double click on the empty area here just to bring up my layer style menu. So I'm just going to move this slider from the right to the left. But if I keep going, you see that there is just sort of on off kind of thing. There is no transition here, which I don't want. If I want to phase it in a little bit uh, more subtle, I can press the option on my keyboard and click to break the tab and then just slide that slider there and then just move that a little bit back. Just going to play around with it a little bit more. Something like that looks good to me. And I'm just going to press OK to accept the change. Now, another thing that you can do just to add to the grunginess of it is to add another texture over it. So if you're following along, you can download that picture. I'm going to open it by going to File and go to Place Embedded again. I'm going to select that texture and press Place. Again, I'm going to resize this by pressing Shift and Option and then clicking on this Transform handle and then resizing it there. Once I'm fine with this, I'm going to let go and then just confirm that. I'm going to press Command-0 to fit it to screen again. And then let's change the blend mode again. What we want to do is use one of these lighten blend modes here. These blend modes here, the darken blend modes, will just obscure the layers below. So it's not something that we want. So let's just see what these blend modes do. So you can see here, if I go on to lighten, it has brought out the lighter bit of the texture. If I go to screen, a little bit more, color dodge, a little bit less, and then uh, linear dodge, lighter color. I kind of like the linear dodge add, so I'm going to click on that. And that gives it this punch, a scrungy look to it. If you want the effect even more, you can duplicate this layer by pressing Command J on the keyboard just to bring out more of the highlight. Well, I've used this graphic to show you what Quick Mask Mode can do. You can also use this technique for logos or scan signatures. And that's how you use the Quick Mask Mode to quickly cut out the background of a simple graphic in Photoshop. Now let's just review what we've done so far. I'm going to turn off all these layers and just return back to our image here. 
To cut out this image from the background, we copied this image to our clipboard and then entered into the quick mask mode by pressing Q on the keyboard. And once we were on the quick mask mode, we pasted the picture back onto the quick mask. And then we used levels to make the darks darker and the whites whiter to separate the image from the background. After that, we created a solid color adjustment. We created a background so we can see our selection a bit better. And then we just played around with different overlays and textures just to bring out the grunginess of the image. So I hope you found this useful. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what your favorite technique was or what you would like to see in future videos. As a small YouTuber who's just started out, I do everything from scratch, from coming up with the idea for the tutorial to creating thumbnails and captions, all of which takes time. So if you enjoyed this video or learned a thing or two, it would help me so much if you can like and subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can get notified for when the next video is out.